Thank you very much. Again, I'm Ray Myers, and I work with uh, in North Texas as the uh, coordinator for the Coffin County Tea Party. And I can tell you, beyond a doubt, in my opinion, of course, that Tea Party organizations across the state and across the United States are the only ones that's really engaged in the fight. I can't see the Democrats or the Republicans engaged in the fight like, like the we are. I can justify that by saying in my own county, and I'm very, very proud to, to tell you this, that during the past two election cycles, we have changed a county treasurer, a JP, four county, four county judges, four county commissioners, a state rep, and a state senator. We've done all of that in two cycles in one county. So what the gentleman was talking about prior to me is that we do have a problem in this country. And he has laid it out, he has laid out the, the, the words and the details for you perfectly. You understand that there's a problem. My mission is to unite you and talk to you about what you can do to, to, go, to go into this fight. I'll give you a few examples. First of all, let me tell you, this is all, the, all of the problems, Sharia, the border issue, the budget, all of these things are all tied together. Every bit of it's tied together. And they're all looking for the same thing, and that's to undermine our country. Now, i got to tell you this. I'm, I'm past 70 years old, and I've got these notes, and I don't apologize for having notes, but I've got notes up here. I have to look down every once in a while. That's okay. It's just like when I walked through the Capitol a while ago, i got to tell you this. I would walk by the DPS officers, the DPS officers would look, and they'd see that Keep Texas Red, and they'd give you a positive nod. That's a good thing. <laughs> now, as far as Sharia and as far as, as the Islamic movement in the United States, my knowledge and my experience has just been local. I do know that in the Dallas area we have a problem. I do know that in the Richardson area, in the Garland area, in the Fort Worth area, and in the Irving area we have a problem. I do know that there's going to be a call to action this next Thursday evening in Irving, Texas. The call is going out for you for everybody to spread the word. And you know, I, I can look out here, I don't see a lot of people, and that's okay. But what I do see is every person you see out here, you multiply that by 10. Because you have a sphere of influence and you can get, get people over to these, these activities in Irving, Texas, or Garland, or wherever it is, or in, in, in Mesquite, or down in, in Fort Bend, it doesn't matter. You can get people involved and get them there. Because if you're not active, if you're not willing to get in the fight, if you're not willing to get in the trenches, then we're, 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 what are we doing this for? There's no need for me to be standing here today. Now, Sharia, from what I understand, the way that Sharia wants to wedge our, our programs here in Texas is through the, the, uh, uh, the marriage law. They're using very, very subtle little gestures and things to get and judges and, and political activists and leaders in the community just, oh, we're just going to be, be married and we already have that law, so it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Yes, it is a problem. I mean, it all boils down to a lot of, a lot of things. We'll just get it down to a simple factor, women's rights. You know, go back to the civil rights movement. Do we want women to be sitting on the back of the bus? Do we want them to drink at a different water fountain? Or, or, or enter, they have to, well, my understanding, they have to enter through a separate door to mosque. I don't, I don't want to go there with, with, with women. You know, we have political activists all over the state of Texas in the Tea Party movement that are absolutely in the fight. Joanne Fleming, I can just go in and talk. Joanne Fleming, Alice Lanahan, Maria Martinez, Maria Espinosa Ling. These are people that are in the fight every day. These are conservative women. And they're not going to stand up and back up for Sharia. They don't want to go there. So we want, we want to totally stand behind these people. Let me give you an example about one lady, and we certainly wouldn't want to dilute her through Sharia. Maria Espinosa Ling, she's a lady. She's in charge of what we call the Remembrance Project. The Remembrance Project honors those victims and, and the parents and the relatives of those those victims that have been killed or maimed 
by uh, illegal aliens. Well, Maria Espinosa Ling has set up this program so we can to, to draw attention to this thing. Now let me tell you one related thing that she did that was kind of out of the realm. This lady went to the border, Brownsville, Texas, got on the International Bridge, drove her pickup out there, turned her pickup around sideways and blocked traffic going both ways. She blocked it. She stood up. And you know what her comment was? I will move my pickup when you release when you re when you release our marine. Huh? Right. That's what she said. Now, do we want to restrict that woman or any woman in the state of Texas or in the United States through Sharia? I say no. Now, and my, thing, my, my, my comment is here, and I hope I don't lose my paper, is what will you remember about today? Well, let me, let me, let me mention to you this one thing. I was here last week. And I was in this building, and I was in the meeting. I walked in through the the, uh, the hearing room where they were talking about Sharia. The committee, I believe it was the committee of seven that was there, and the room was packed. And I, when, I, when I walked through there, I thought we probably outnumbered the Muslim uh, people in there, probably five or six to two, something like that. I was wrong. They had people all through that meeting. It was a packed house. You couldn't tell. You look. You walk in. You're looking for people with with uh, with, with uh, uh, Muslim garments on. You didn't. You saw a little bit of that, but you really don't know because a major major part of their uh, movement is disguise and deceit. You never know. So the thing is, you have to know through your state legislature, through your senate, through your house, who to go and talk to. And, and, and so you need to get to the point is to get to know your state representatives, get to know your senator, get to know your committee people, get to know their staff, and come, come involved so you'll know what's going on there. Okay? Now, here's a point. The art of politics. There's a new definition of politics. I'm going to just give you the new definition because I'm not even going to worry about the old one. But every time that you turn on the TV or the radio, you get to hear this. And you hear it from the Republicans and you hear it from the Democrats. Now listen to this. The art of politics. The art of manipulating the masses to achieve a goal through the use of an emotional issue. We're going to throw Granny over the cliff, aren't we? We're going to take away the Social Security, aren't we? Huh? Through the use of an emotional issue. We are going to separate all those little kids that's coming across our southern border from their parents. That is the emotional issue that the, that, that, that the Democrats, the liberals, those who want open borders, that's the mantra that they use right there. Their agenda is to use that emotional issue they're, they're, they've already got the churches, they've got the Catholic churches, they've even got some of the Baptist churches on their agenda, on their agenda uh, using that narrative. That is using that narrative. Do not be deceived through emotion. That is one of the ways that they try to, to manipulate you. We want to make sure that, you be, that you're able to identify that. Just a few days back, back I believe it was in, in, uh, in August, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick identified that there were and, and reported that there were 10 ISIS uh, members on our southern border that were caught. 10 of them. Right. Now, ISIS, does that ring a bell? Does that make the radar go up? Does the flag go up the pole when you start thinking about that? <laughs> now, let's cut this down to the bare minimum, um, not the bare minimum, but to the, to, the, to the thing that really, really concerns me the most because you see this on TV, if you'll turn on Fox News, and you'll see in this, the last, what, six months, you see where they behead people, where they burn people alive, where they do all those those kinds of things, and we're so, we're so blessed because that's happening 5,000 miles away. Huh? Well, let me ask you something. What if they make a YouTube of this? What if they stop at a little town 
in Belton or in Conroe or in uh, Rising Star or wherever in a van in an elementary school and just happen to just, just pick up one of our little kids walking home from school. And then they take him down and they make a YouTube. And I don't have to tell you what the YouTube would be. What is it going to take for you to, for your attention to raise and for you to get involved? That's the thing. You've got to understand that this doesn't have to happen 5,000 miles away. It's coming right here. That's coming right here. And you have to be aware of what's going on. Now, another thing that you should remember. And this is tied through the border issue. When I'm talking about the border issue, we have to worry about there. By the way, there was I think it was 132 countries that had been identified crossing our southern border. Come on. 132 countries have been identified crossing our southern border, not legally, illegally. Right. Okay. That should make you aware. Now, what is the Obama administration? What are they doing? What do they do with all these people coming to the United States? By the way, we're worried about our southern border, and we're worried about the Hispanic population in Central America. The next wave is coming from Syria, folks. Amen. It's coming over here. Get ready. And you know what? You know what? It's, you know what? We're going to call this. They have a name for it, and they're using it very, very carefully. There's a name called. And you can Google this. You can take out your telephone and Google this right now. Google Southwest Keys, yes. Southwest Key, K-E-Y, and Acorn. Come on. Southwest Keys and Acorn. You can Google that and see what you get. Southwest Key is the new name for Acorn. They're the group that's transporting all these kids, whether they be Hispanic, or Muslim, or whatever they are, all over the United States, and and the and the white buses, absolutely, yes, absolutely, uh, you got it. We we saw it. Now, the plan is called Cloward Pivens. Right. You can look that up, Cloward Pivens. The plan. Now listen, this plan calls for the destruction of capitalism in America by the swelling of the welfare roads to the point of collapsing our economy and then implementing socialism by nationalizing our private institutions. That's right. Do I have to, do I have to read that again? Imploding our economy through by, by numbers, sheer numbers. That's right. You better hear it. Sheer numbers. Now, there's a man standing in your audience right now. He is a plumbing contractor. Oh, I don't know how he got involved except he was just a vision. He was using vision. He was watching one time as I hear the story and he kept seeing all these buses coming into a travel America in Rockwall, Texas. Doug, back here, he's right there. He kept, he kept seeing all these buses come into a, a travel America in Rockwall, Texas. Now it started out, and he was observing these buses, he decided what in the world's going on here? I'm going to start asking questions. So as it started out, there were four to six buses a day coming through Rockwall, Texas, and it wasn't all Hispanics on these buses. It was different. We've seen people coming out of there with their Muslim garb on off of these buses. Now what were they doing? Every bus loaded up with probably anywhere from 35 to 60 people, most of them senior citizens, most of them Hispanic, and every one of them stopping there, and the, and the, the, uh, the, 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 the travelers on the bus, the, alien, the illegal aliens, were getting off the bus, going into the Travel America truck stop, and buying Fritos with brand new $100 American bills. Ben Franklin's uh, going in there buying that buying their free toast with hundred dollar bills. They weren't getting on the buses with the, you know we didn't see them get on the bus with luggage or anything. They all had little sacks. But everyone Doug decided that he would question these people. 
So he took it upon himself to question these people, these people that was riding on the buses, and make a video of it. And say, where are you going? Every one of them was headed to Chicago. Every one of them. Wasn't any of them coming back. They're all coming. By the way, the buses have increased from six to from four to six to seven to ten right now. Seven to ten coming a day on one highway in the state of Texas. Only one highway. And there we're watching. Well, Doug made the video. And I'm very happy to report to you that I handed a copy of that video to the governor of the state of Texas three weeks ago. Yes, I did. And I told him what was going on. And I said, what are you going to do? And he, he, he took the report straight to McCall, who is the DPS chair, and also the General Nichols and, and so forth. And they are going, I really believe that the governor of Texas is going to stand up for us. I think he's going to do something for us. So at least we have that going. Please understand that you do have friends in this building here. Not as many as you think, but you do have some friends. Yeah. And and those that, you know, I can just start naming off people like Stickland and Kraus and, and Spitzer and, you know, uh, Bob Hall, uh, Don Huffaz. They are our friends. These are the new people that the Tea Party has actually sent inside this building. And they're, they're there for you. I want you to understand that. I'm not going to talk to you much longer, but I do want to end this thing with a call to action. It is up to people like you. You're the activists out here. You're people that's actually engaged. You're taking the time to come. I was honored last night to stand with with uh, with uh, Pastor Rafael Cruz. Our, our former speaker just talked about the pastors not getting involved. That is his, that is, that's, that is Rafael's message. We must get the Christian community engaged. Christian apathy is at a, at a, at a, at a, at a great, so I'll give you an example, 50 million Christians didn't vote in the last election. An estimate of 50 million Christians. We need you to be involved. We need you to do, to work. Now let me tell you, I want to end with the definition of a Tea Party. Some of you know what a Tea Party is. Well, let me end with a definition of a Tea Party. Listen carefully. Organized teams of like-minded, patriotic, conservative Judeo-Christians united together to save our country from a tyrannical government leader whose mission is to destroy the Constitution and erode the very foundation of our economy and our traditional American values. Right. With the onslaught of attacks on our Christian religion, it's about time we told the nation who we are. We're not teabaggers. We're not occupiers. We're not radicals. For the most part, we're Judeo-Christians. We love our God, we love our family, we love our country. And plain and simple, we're going to dig in. And if the Marxist progressive seculars want to declare war on Christians, they've tried that before, that the revolution began. Yeah. yeah. We believe in the Constitution. We believe in the rule of law. We believe in securing our border. We believe in a balanced budget. And most of all, we believe in personal responsibility. That's right. And if the progressive seculars want to find us, we meet each, we meet each and every Sunday and throughout the week in every community in America. We are not ashamed of who we are. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.